Hello dear students, welcome to Pen and Paper Chemistry on YouTube. We will continue with our topic of carboxylic acids and under the topic of carboxylic acids we are today going to talk about acidic character and how it is it helps us to compare various compounds. So make sure that you have your pen and paper ready so that you can take down notes for offline reference. Ready to go? Earlier we've discussed quite a few properties of acids which are in general shown by all acids whether mineral or carboxylic of which the four prominent ones are the acids react, with, re, uh, sorry, react with active metals to liberate hydrogen, acids react with bases or alkalis to form salt and water only, the reaction being known as neutralization. Acids react with carbonates or bicarbonates to give a gas known as carbo carbon dioxide and you will also observe brisk effervescence over here. What's the test for carbon dioxide? Can you tell me? Yes, absolutely. It turns lime water milky and when you pass in excess, the milkiness disappears. Yes, this is a test that we've been doing since our uh, maybe grade 8 or 9. Acids also turn blue litmus to red. Now, why do and what factors affect the acidic character, especially of carboxylic acids, is what we are going to talk about in this video. What do we mean by acidic character? Now, there are various theories to explain acidic character, the prominent ones being the Arrhenius theory, Bronsted and and Lowry concept and of course the Lewis concept. Arrhenius concept was to do with H positive and OH negative ions. Bronsted and Lowry concept what we are going to discuss now mainly talks about proton donors and proton acceptors. On the other hand Lewis concept is more to do with electron. Electron acceptor is an acid A for acceptor A for an acid and electron donor would be a base. As I said, we are going to discuss the acidic character in terms of the proton. Acids are proton donors, whereas bases are proton acceptors. Now, what do we mean by proton? Proton means simply a hydrogen atom which has been rid of its electron from which the electron has been taken away. So do you think that this proton can exist independently? No, a proton cannot exist independently. So what it does is it combines with a water molecule to form what we call as the hydronium ion. So for example, HCl which is a mineral acid breaks down to give you H positive and Cl negative. It's a strong acid, so notice the single headed arrow, the arrow facing in the forward direction. The proton over here combines with water to form what we call as the hydronium ion. But for ease of explanation, we shall stick to the concept of H positive. So acids are proton donors, whereas bases are proton acceptors. In other words, the two equations that I have written over here, I can combine them to give me a, a single equation. HCl plus water gives me H3O positive plus Cl negative. The H positive released by HCl is caught by water. Now, just now we said HC, uh, uh, sorry, acids, Bronsted acids are proton donors. In other words, HCl is a donating its proton. In other words, it's a Bronsted acid. Now, in turn, it forms a something which is happy to take a proton. So, in other words, my Cl negative is a base. The combination of HCl and Cl negative, they are mutual acids and bases. That is why Cl negative is known as the conjugate base of HCl. In short, we denote it as Cb. So, 
HCl and Cl negative are conjugate acid base pairs. How do you determine the conjugate acid base pair? Simply add H positive or remove H positive. So for example, if I give you HSO4 negative and I ask you to tell me what will be the conjugate acid of this and what will be the conjugate base of this. Correct. Conjugate base means I am asking you to treat this as an acid. So what will be the conjugate base? Simply remove the proton SO4 to negative. So this becomes the conjugate base. Now, when I am asking you the conjugate acid, in other words, I am asking you to treat HSO4 as a base, in other words, something which is taking up a proton in order to turn into an acid. So, you will have H2SO4. Interesting so far? Now, what you have to do in order to ensure that your learning is consolidated and well in place, Please make sure that you write all of this down. Please write it down so that you have notes for offline reference. I will keep the screen live with the notes written on it so that it is easier for you to pause and take down the notes. We are now going to extend our learning uh, of this acids to weak acids. So for example, a carboxylic acid, RCOOH. Now this will also have a tendency to donate a proton. So in other words, it is going to lose this proton in order to form RCOO negative, what we called as carboxylate ion, if you recall our earlier lessons. Now this carboxylate ion in turn, the proton from here, so the proton from here moves to the H2OO, it's the O moving along with it. So the H from here moves to the water and we will have H3O positive. In other words, again, what do we have? A conjugate acid base pair. Similarly, let's go back to what we did earlier. Now water is taking up a proton. When it is taking up a proton, in other words, it is forming an acid. It is itself acting as a proton acceptor. So water accepting proton forming H3O positive. In turn, the H3O positive can go back to form water. So again, I have a, an, a conjugate acid base pair where water is the base and H3O positive is the acid. This is the Bronsted and Lowry concept of acid and bases. Now, as we said, we are going to extend our concept to weak acid. So, again, what we have here, RCOOH, it is acid, losing a proton, forming carboxylate ion, water, gaining a proton, forming H3O positive. Again, conjugate, as, sorry, acid, conjugate base, base and conjugate acid. To make things more generic, I am now going to write the acid as HA plus H2O in equilibrium with the anion and H3O positive so that we can connect our Bronsted and Lowry concept to any acid rather than limiting ourselves only to the uh, RCOOH. Now here if you notice the arrows. Here, this is a dynamic equilibrium. In other words, the acid and the water are changing into the conjugate acid and base and they in turn have a tendency to turn back into the unionized acid and the water molecule. So that means there is an equilibrium. Now, if you recall, when we have equilibrium, I can write the equilibrium equation. So what is the equilibrium equation that we have over here? It will be the concentration of the products divided by the concentration of the reactants. So, look at this equilibrium expression again, RCOO negative, H3O positive divided by RCOH and water. Be very careful about the square brackets that we have used. 
they indicate concentration in moles per liter or moles per decimeter cube. That is why the square brackets. So, make sure that you put them in place. Now, here since water is uh, going to be almost constant, what we do is we to multiply the equilibrium constant with the concentration of water which is kind of constant and we get another constant over here. So, I have RCOO negative H3O positive divided by the concentration of the undissociated carboxylic acid. This gives me a new constant over here. Ka because I am talking about an acid. So, this is known as the equilibrium constant of a weak acid because there is partial ionization over here. So, please make a note of it. Again, I will keep the derivation in front of you. This also covers a part of our equilibrium constant and the uh, equilibrium constant of weak acids concept. Now, if you see over here, Ka helps to determine what kind of acid I have at hand, whether it is a weak acid or a strong acid. Acid means something which is going to form H3O positive. If my numerator is bigger, that means my Ka value will be higher. When does my numerator become higher? When my H3O positive concentration is higher. In other words, there is higher formation of this H3O positive. My acid is undergoing greater ionization. Acid undergoing greater ionization means giving me a greater or a higher value of the equilibrium constant. That means I have a stronger acid at hand. Lower the value of H3O positive, lower will be the Ka. Now, we do not have to determine the value of H3O positive. Just by looking at the Ka values, we are able to determine whether the acid is strong or weak. So, look at these values which I have jotted down for you. Look at uh, HCOH which is formic acid or methanoic acid, Ka value is 17.7 into 10 to the power minus 5. Acetic acid or ethanoic acid is 1.75 into 10 to the power minus 5. So, if I just ignore the exponential values which are same, you can very clearly see that formic acid is uh, 10 times more acidic than acetic acid or ethanoic acid roughly. Same way compare fluoroacetic acid this is 260 again if I ignore the exponential value because again it is the same 10 to the power minus 5 you will find that fluoroacetic acid is even more acidic than acetic acid. Now dealing with these kind of exponential values is not easy. It gets confusing. Now, here I have put all the exponential values in 10 to the power minus 5. Supposing you have to deal with some values as 10 to the power minus 7, one is 10 to the power minus 5, the other is 10 to the power minus 9. Honestly, I get confused. So, I would like to clear this confusion for you by introducing a new concept and which we will call as PKA. More of that in the next video. Stay connected, stay tuned. See you there.